Natal from the Agile HR community and today I have Kate Rand with me who is the People Operations Director at Beyond and we'll get a bit of information about what that means very soon but is also and we're very lucky uh, to have Kate as our partner and facilitator for the Agile HR Certified Practitioner Program and in particular for the programs we run in London. Hello Kate. Hello. <laughs> Can you start us off by saying a few words about what you do at Beyond and also a little bit of context about what Beyond does as a company? So Beyond was founded in 2010 and we're a founder-led organisation still. We are roughly around 300 people and that flexes up and down with the contractor contingent we have. We are a full service digital agency mm -hmm. and what that means is that we, we build and market digital products for our clients. Okay. Um, and we work with large organizations such as Google uh, and also Just Eat and, and other similar ones. So okay. we're based across the US and the UK currently. Okay, so pretty amazing client base. Yeah, pretty good. We're very lucky. Great. <laughs> and what do you do at Beyond in your role as People Operations Director? So I look after uh, what we call employee experience. Mm -hmm. And what that means at Beyond is pretty much everything that sits below the line on the P&L and uh, in sort of real speak, that is your facilities, your uh, IT, the information security, your HR, um, and anything else that supports sort of admin and things like that. Okay. So it's what you may have, have heard of before as being operations. Mm -hmm. And we talk about this as employee experience. For us, employee experience is a stack. And um, this is similar to how you would talk about a tech stack, with okay. the full stack um, being the front end, the back end. Yeah. We talk about employee experience being made up of the physical, the cultural, and the technical elements. Okay, yeah. Um, and we try and look at it in this way because the user journey that the employee has shouldn't be broken up by whether or not it's an IT issue or a HR issue. Yeah, great. So it's the true end-to-end -end employee experience and a type of value chain in itself or value stream. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Great. And uh, Beyond as a company works in an agile way, is that right? That's correct. Great. So when you introduced Agile, they were quite open to the idea. Well, they, they were very happy that I'd brought Agile <laughs> into the HR team. Uh, they had underinvested in HR before I joined, and it made a lot of sense to try and bring the HR function up to speed with the, rest, the way the rest of the organization worked, yeah. and that they worked with their clients. So they saw it as we started to speak their language. Okay, great. So it actually uh, demonstrated greater value for HR to yeah. work in this way. Excellent. So it'd be great to learn a bit more about how you brought Agile ways of working into HR at Beyond and tell us a bit about the adventure that you went on. And I think you embraced a bit of a test and learn approach, which is very agile in the way that you did it. Can you talk us through that? Absolutely. So um, I will go back to the beginning of the story. And it was actually around about the time that I came on the, the Agile HR training. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I knew there was a different way to approach HR and um, for years I'd been, I think, using the mindset but didn't really understand the wording for it. Yeah. Um, so when I came across the course I was very excited to go on it. It was uh, a couple of weeks before I was due to run a strategy workshop okay. with uh, the executive team and the people team. And I'd set the workshop up uh, in, the, in the standard way, you know, we're going to go for four days, we're going to build a strategy for four years, yep. it's going to be great, lots of spreadsheets, lots of presentations. Yeah, lots of blueprinting. <laughs> yeah, all that good stuff. And I came on the course and I walked away and I thought, I need to change the way we're doing this. And I completely pivoted the workshop. Um, quite a few late nights, I managed to get the buy-in from one person in San Francisco who was going to be my co-facilitator for the two days. Okay. Um, and we, we took the group of people on this journey over the four days, we got them to buy into it, and we came out the other side with a backlog with a 93 user stories on it for us to work through, and so began our Agile journey. Okay. Excellent. And so what happened? So you took 93 stories uh, into uh, operation. And so what happened? Did you get through them all? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so what happened after that is we all went into sprinting. Mm -hmm. And this is everybody who was in that room. So we had people like the CTO and the COO involved right. in okay. the, the sprinting. And we sprinted like that for several months, back to back without a break. And we did deliver some amazing things across um, all of the studios. It was the first time we had collaborated as a group of people. Okay. But it was very overwhelming. Yeah. And the, the trying to manage the BAU at the same time was getting more and more difficult. 
Now we ran regular retrospectives with the group of, um, with the group that was doing this, and it became apparent that they just weren't enjoying it anymore. Okay. So we decided to pivot it slightly, and the pivot we made at that time was to increase the number of people involved in the sprinting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we moved to a more dual track agile approach, which again it worked, but it took so much coordination that mm-hmm. it, it was a full time role just trying to make all this work together. Yeah. Um, and it was still not particularly enjoyable for the group of people that were there. We had a few people leave. It meant that there were some holes. It got very difficult to, to actually um, produce anything. So the, the recent change that we made is we've actually gone to product teams instead. Okay. And we've kept them on a local level because it is much easier to collaborate with people when they are face-to-face. Yep. So we've, we've gone back to a local level. We've got these product teams. We have um, a product owner for employee experience, okay. a product owner for DNI, um, and a product owner for talent acquisition. And they actually pull from a pool of people and from the wider organisation to deliver features in these products. Okay, great. And so the way that you're working at the moment is you're kind of a team that can pull on people across the business, and you'll then deliver something, what, in a couple of, like, one or two sprints over a period of weeks? Is How does it work? So we've done a bit of a hack job mm-hmm. with the way that we use um, Agile. And we do uh, one to two week sprints, but what we actually look at really is quarters. Okay. So the team will go through a process where they will do what we call sprint planning, which is agreeing what they are going to try and tackle in that quarter. Mm-hmm. And they will go through prioritization as part of that. So we use Moscow. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then... On the, the Kanban board, which is a physical board, they'll have all the user stories that they said they would like to try and get through for that quarter, yeah. prioritise, and then on a weekly basis, they will pull through what they're going to get done in that week. Okay. Sometimes they will have a particular user story or um, a particular set of user stories that they want to sprint on with a number of different people, so okay. that will then be dealt with separately as its own sprint. Right, okay. Otherwise, it's sort of people pulling user stories and getting that done themselves or with a couple of other people. Yeah. Okay, great. So there's a combination of sprinting to sort of innovate and deliver, and people would work on that. Is it 100% of the time or 50% of the time? What's sort of the percent? So we um, we take it week by week. Okay. And for those people that have sort of BAU that they need to do, they just block themselves out for a day. Mm-hmm. They go off and they do that. So they would just take in less work for that period of time. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. And then the rest of the time, you're kind of prioritizing the most important things to work on and get done. And it's sort of getting the business as usual done through everyday work. But that's up on the Kanban board as well. Is that right? So we don't put BAU on the Kanban board. Okay. The, the rule we have is that um, anything that is just part of your job mm-hmm. is just part of your job. Okay. And it's just how much time you can dedicate to pushing the Kanban forward. Okay. So it's more the exp- employee experience, the innovation, the deliveries, what's going to deliver value to the business. Yeah. yeah. Great. So you've built this award-winning culture because you are now recognized at a, as a great place to work. <laughs> and you've done this through an agile mindset and truly you know, living and breathing this agile HR ways of working. Can you talk us through an example of one of the products that you're proud uh, to talk about and, and show to people that you've done through this agile way of working? Yeah, absolutely. So the one that, that comes to mind the quickest is actually uh, what we call Beyond Flexibility. Okay. And it's our approach to uh, supporting lifestyle diversity within the organization. So um, it's, it's, our, it's a flexible working, uh, but it's more around the agile working side of things. Okay. And just for uh, explanation, agile working is about working without the need to tie to location, time, okay. space, okay. all the other bits and pieces, not to be confused with agile. Yes, agile. yes, always a bit confusing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, now, this is something that we co-created with the employees. We, we did um, a lot of user research to start with because we wanted to validate the hypothesis, which was people wanted to work flexibly. Mm-hmm. And that really helped us put together the documentation and the guidelines for it. And what we actually came out with were a set of principles. Okay. Because part of the uh, validation process that we went through, we realized that one size does not fit all. And what often happens in agencies like ours is different teams have different requirements. So yeah. someone might be IP restricted, somebody else might have certain times that they have to speak to the client. Mm-hmm. So if you try to do anything in a prescriptive way with a policy it mm-hmm. would fail very quickly yeah okay so we we started uh putting this product together a couple of years ago and we've iterated on it since so the principles came out uh we then uh, piloted it within the london studio we listened to what people were saying 
and we started to put some notes at the bottom which help people understand how to use it. Mm -hmm. So we now say to people, you know, if you're going to work flexibly, it's unlikely that it's going to work if you're going to be in the studio less than uh, two days a week. Mm -hmm. So then you need to look at other alternatives. Mm -hmm. um, and we've just been building it out since then. Okay. And this is actually something that we've now released as a framework to support other organisations externally. Okay. Because it's been so successful. Oh, wow. Okay. And um, how, did, how did they find out about it? So um, I talk a lot about it. I do yeah. quite a lot of public speaking. And um, it's something that I often get asked, which is how have you made flexible working work in yeah. the agency environment? Yeah. And um, I was very lucky because we had a huge period of growth, which meant we had no space. So that was a chance for me to bring in this uh, possibility of doing mm -hmm. flexible working. Um, and we managed to show that the quality of work did not decline, mm -hmm. which was great. Yep. And the business value that we were able to deliver through it is that we can hire talent which uh, doesn't necessarily live in the area, is uh, more diverse, mm -hmm. which has meant that we now have a more diverse workforce. Okay, that's a great example, yeah. And um, what do sort of people say that that brings to them in terms of working at Beyond? Is, is this sort of a, mm -hmm. a kind of deal breaker for people? What, what happens? So it is one of the pieces that people talk the most about when we do, um, when we raise internal feedback and when we talk externally to people, because as an organization, we, we only pay market rate, mm -hmm. we look at total reward. And flexibility is something that people in the agency world just do not get. Mm -hmm. So this for, for parents, this is something that is just amazing for them because often places will say, we do flexible working, but when the deadline comes, the flexible working gets thrown out the window. Yeah. And then they're made to feel very bad about having to leave to look after their children. So we've created a space where that's not the case. And these principles ring true. And we've got case studies. We've done uh, videos to show this. And so it really is a great success. And um, I think that the biggest success marker for me is that we haven't had a single person have to put in a formal flexible working application oh wow okay because the, the guidelines work so well for them excellent and at beyond you do work in this way don't you where it's more about principles and guidelines rather than policies and rules can you just say a couple of words of, about that yeah so we have all the legislation in a document in a book which everyone has access to but we prefer where possible not to get to the base level of the legislation and to build an environment where people feel that they can belong and mm -hmm. they can you know act in the way that they need to act. So whenever we're looking at bringing something new in, we, we go through um, a period of testing anyway, but we always try and build guidelines instead. So um, we've done this with what we refer to as wellness days, which is our approach to um, kind of how people can take time off for mental health, okay. physical health, yeah. make sure they look after themselves. We even do it for things like credit cards. So corporate credit cards for us, we have guidelines for how you should use them mm -hmm. um, and sort of the principles which are you know similar to the Netflix ones because if you go with the principle that everybody is an adult then you should be treating them in that way and adults don't need 28 pages of things not to do with a credit card exactly yeah um, it just builds an environment of trust and the psychological safety that it's so important for an agile way of working yeah absolutely and I often say to people when they start going down this route of um, building very sort of prescriptive processes and policies that don't plan for the 20% that will mess it up because they're yeah. always going to mess it up. Yeah. Plan for the 80% of people that want the transparency, that want to co-create. Yes. Plan for those. Yeah, because that's the employee experience that you're trying to create and, and market and be your brand. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for spending time with us today and doing the interview. What I really love about the Beyond example is it's a great uh, sort of display of what we talk about in the program, which is Agile for HR and HR for Agile. So by embracing the mindset and tools within your own teams, uh, you can go and co-create this amazing employee experience, which then leads to business success, which is what it's all about, isn't it? This great virtuous circle. <laughs> uh, so to wrap it all up, um, I'd love to hear from you about why do you think it's important for HR that are out there in other companies and might not even work in an agile organization. Why do you think it's important for them to embrace an agile mindset? Okay, big question. Mm, I know. <laughs> so I think HR as a profession really need to begin to evolve themselves just so they can keep up with the, with the other disciplines and the pace of change. And part of that is moving away from this approach of being dictators of best practice and moving mm. more to this facilitator of success mindset. Yeah. Um, and with that comes the need to pick up new tools, to, to learn new ways of working and to embrace the change and embrace 
the ways of working that are happening in the organisation. Yeah, no, it's great. Well, de- well said. And I think we've been talking about this as a profession for a long time, but we've never had the tools or the methods to do it. And I think Agile really helps us with that. Yeah, great. So thank you so much again. And uh, we are the Agile HR community. You can come to Kate's Certified Practitioner Program, <laughs> particularly if you want to come to London. And you can find out more information about our programs on our website and our meetups. Thank you very much, Kate. And thank you.